Hello and welcome to Face to Face on City TV. I am Omaru Sanda Amadou. The new patriotic party has launched its manifesto. It is calling on the NDC to launch its manifesto, which seems to be uh, a manifesto launch that has been postponed. But aside political parties, there are individuals who want to be president of this land as well or govern this country, except that they do not want to do so on a party line. My guest today is an independent presidential aspirant for election. My guest on Face to Face today is Marik Kofi Gan, a.k.a. Kofi Ghana. You're welcome to Thank Face you. to Face. Thank you, Marik. I was concerned about your name, though. How is it pronounced? Marike, like, in, like the no, makeup people? No, it's actually Marik. So just Marik? Just Marik. And then Kofi, Kofi is Kofi is Kofi. Kofi is Kofi, which I love, by the way. Okay, you love Kofi I because you're Friday Kofi. born. Yes. And then... And then Gan. I, I was worried about Gan because I know you are ever. I thought it was Ghana, which means four o'clock. <laughs> Actually, you're right. It is Ghana means four o'clock, but it is not Ghana. It's not Ghana. No. So it's Gin. It's, it's Gan. I prefer to pronounce it Gan. But where is it from? It's from the... It's a little town, uh, former coffee growing town in Petwe, Hoffe, a little tiny place called okay. Avejulu. Avejulu. I see. How are people of Avejulu receiving news that one of their <laughs> children want to be president? Well, um, I mean, a few people from there have heard. Uh, it's not a little, it's not a big village. It's a very, very tiny farming, farming place okay. uh, where my father is from. Um, I think it is more people in Keta who have heard because I grew up largely in Keta, okay. uh, lived with my grandparents in Keta, did everything in Keta, went to Keta Secondary School. So Keta is more the place where people would have, you know, heard about what I'm doing rather than, you know, a vigil. Even though we've got a few posters up there now. I see. Let's speak to people of Keta now. Okay. <laughs> Alena strong ai doji awo do do tona apojujo na maga ba le mona na mo ta un gada le lamia atroshun lamia fa gbana strong ya uma your ewa is good by the way gaka vogba to du aduyaji koi f20 blave ta nge ja fi me ga koi na fa le mona na ma ka ke vovoto to le ma vovoto to nya ba jidulo nya me yo yon fi ba vogba to a Okay. 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 Let's come back from West Indian <laughs> uh, we, we, we just went briefly to visit uh, the. Uh, forgive me, what's the name of the old man? Uh, was, I, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, uh, let's come back. Why do you want to be president? Omar, because if, if, and this is not just about me, uh, let, me, let me make that very clear. This is not about me. This is, uh, I just represent a lot of Ghanaians who want to see something different happen. Because if, if we don't move away from where things are, if we leave things unchecked the way they are, uh, we're going to continue having young people who are not uh, being groomed to be in line with where the future is heading. We're going to have businesses that are going to face vindictiveness every time there's a change of government. We're going to have rural people who, uh, whose life is going to be very far apart from you and me who live in Accra or Kumasi. And there's going to be this huge gap between uh, uh, those in the rural and those in the, uh, mm. in the southern blocks. 
Um, and if we don't change this, uh, old people are going to grow up, go on pension, and feel like they are a burden on society because, you know, we're not structured to look after them properly. So okay. there's a whole lot of things that if we don't uh, do anything about where things are currently, our economy is, 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 is failing, mm. really. And so if we don't do anything about this, uh, we're going to go back to almost uh, what we started 27 years ago. I will ask you to expand more on these things, but mm. let's get to know you. So who are you? I'm Kofi Gan. Um, I grew up in Keta. I was born in Keta, Jerukopa uh, Hospital. Uh, so I grew up in Keta. I grew up with my grandparents. Uh, so I grew up with uh, my grandparents as a fisherman. And my grandmother was selling You were going fold. fishing? Yeah. Well, I still in fish. the sea or in the river? In the, no, in the sea and the lagoon. Okay. Um, the Keta Lagoon. The Keta Lagoon. Okay. I still fish. You um, know how to cast a net? Oh, which one of the nets are you talking about? There's the about one? five different nets. Okay, the, I think it's seen net. Like sabu mm. is the one you throw. Okay, you, you, okay. Know, you know how to that's that's sabu. Yes, you know, I, still, you know I, still, I, still, I still throw sabu. You can fix the metals at the tip yeah. of it. Zugu, but yeah. Yes, you know that one. Yes. And when it gets stuck in the water, you're yeah. able to dive and go and retrieve it? I still swim. You can swim into yes. the... And, and, and By the way, the lagoon is not as deep as the, the sea. Okay. And they are, even though it's the same sabu, it's got a different structure, the one we use in the sea and the one we use in the lagoon. I see. So yeah. you're able to do that. You've done yeah. that before. I've done that and before. And then you catch fish. Yes. And you, know you either catch fish with a net or, uh, what is it called, a hook. No, hook. You just catch one fish per at hour a time. Or no, you actually can catch two at a time. It depends on how, <laughs> how, how, how smart We've become it. innovative in the way we design hooks. So you have two, two so hooks. So we and have then one line, nylon line, and then hooks. at the end we have two. Actually, you can even have more hooks on the line. Mm. You, don't, you don't have to yes. just have two. You can have more on the line. I've seen that. Yeah. And then you have to put more. Do you put worms? You put a, a worms. they call it in or something like that. Uh, yeah, we call it vocally. Okay, so that's what you put at the yes. tip. You but either use worms or... Uh, there's a special way we cook banku so it doesn't dissolve in the water. So you put it there to yeah. bait them, and yeah. then they come in and then yeah. eat. So you catch fish, and then you do what with it when you are growing up? Um, you either sell them, uh, usually you tend to divide them. There's one that goes to the house, that's customary. Some has to go home, and then the rest you sell. You, so you help your grandfather on a large-scale business, or you're doing your own thing no, we, as a child? So my, my grandfather had a couple of nets. So people would come the previous day and rent out the nets mm -hmm. to the lagoon, okay. go and lay them out. Uh, and then in the mornings, uh, they either sell and bring a portion of the feed to him, or they bring a portion of the fish for him himself to sell. So you, you can paddle the canoe? Oh, yeah. I see. Uh, we don't paddle. We use the longer you, the bamboo out, stick. Oh, okay, the longer yeah. one. It's still paddling. Uh, except uh, that you don't use an outboard motor. We don't use an outboard motor. You use an outboard motor if the lagoon, uh, sorry, if the uh, boat is moving from Keta towards our flower area. Not because of technological no, because advancements. Of Maybe now you have more outboard um, motors. If you go to Keta and people still use the bamboo stick. Okay, for just the 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 people who do the fishing closer yeah. to the shore. Yeah. I see. Yeah. What else have you done? I've sold foes. Okay. In the Fos, Keta market. In, uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Where? In the Keta market, I my grandma, I still remember my grandma's uh, stall right in the Keta market, uh, close to the lagoon side of the market. It's quite a big market, uh, but it's, it's all waste now. It's, How it's do you sell it? Do you carry it on your head? Or uh, your no. Head? So you all have stalls, and then you uh, you go in there, you separate the T-shirts from the uh, John Greens, we used to call mm -hmm. them back then, and then the jeans and, and all those. Uh, and then each of them has prices and uh, you know, uh, you just sit there and wait. If customers come, if you see people passing, you you call them in to come and buy. You know, all Which year are we talking about this business you're doing? Oh, we're talking about in the uh, late uh, 70s, early 80s. Okay. Yeah. So you're way over 40 years old. I'm about, I'm 46 years old. You're 46 yeah. years old. There are a number of requirements. Uh, so you have to be Ghanaian. Are you Ghanaian? Yeah, I am very Ghanaian. You are 40 plus? Yes. Are you saying? I'm... You should answer that question. That's, 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 that's what the Constitution says. Am said. I saying? I'm just putting the question. Do you believe I'm saying? I don't know. How do you test it? Because the Constitution <laughs> says you have to be of sound I mind. I am saying as far as I'm sound mind. I'm sound mind. Uh, what other criteria is there? Um, you, you need to... to um, say again? You have to be a voter, I think. Yes, you have to be a voter, Are which I am, voter? I am qualified voter. You voted voter. before? Yes, I have. How many times? I've voted on every occasion since 2012. Oh, okay. Yeah. 2012. That's just yeah. two elections. Yeah. Uh, where have you been before then? Um... It, it's one of those things where you've never really taken an interest. In some of the cases, I think we were living in Nigeria uh, when, you know, Jerry's first election happened. Uh, we were living in Nigeria. 92. Yeah. 
Um, so we were, it, it wasn't that we were living in Nigeria. We had come back, but my dad, we were still shuttling between Nigeria and Ghana. So there were days that... So dad was doing business in Nigeria? My dad is a building technologist, uh, mm -hmm. and he gets bored easily, so he travels quite a bit around. <laughs> and uh, you were following him? Yes, being the first boy. So you we were in Liberia, we were in Nigeria, and a few other places. Yeah, we're four kids, two men, two, two women. But you are the first? I'm the first son. So you were almost the there guy. There two girls before me. Oh, so two you women were, before me. So you were his uh, walking stick. Wherever he went, he, went, <laughs> you, he took you. You could say I was his companion. 2000, where were you? 2000, I was still in Ghana. I was... Uh, you didn't register to vote? No, um, I think it you was one more than of those... 18 years old. Yes, I was more than 20. Why didn't you register? Um... <laughs> I think it was one of those things where you, as a young person, you really didn't see what you were getting out of, of, out of the process um, until subsequently when you started forming your, your mental view politically. Uh, and then you started getting a bit more interested. And plus, you know, after, after 2000, early 2000, I traveled to the UK. Um, uh, before I traveled, I just became a chartered accountant, worked here for a good number of years, I think four or five years. Uh, doing some big audits and some a lot of traveling acts. On the side, do you regret that you didn't register to vote in 2000? You know, I think I voted in the years that I was uh, politically ready to make a choice that I felt would make political impact. The privilege says if you're more than 18 years, mm -hmm. you should register and vote. Yes, if you don't that, take that, part that, is what the, that is what the requirements say, or that is what the... the it's a privilege, it's almost. A privilege. It's, not, it's not an yeah, instruction. It's not an instruction. Yeah. But you see, I, I don't think people should just vote because they should vote. No, they're not voting just because right. they're voting. They're voting because they believe in the idea right. so to them. And they but vote. you need to form your political mind to determine whether why you're... You need to convince yourself why you're voting. You think 18 is too early for... I don't think it's too early. So why didn't you register? I just think that, you know, everybody has a different political orientation. I know, but... Um, in my you're... family, we never talked much about politics. So it was, it was largely... Everybody for himself. So the first time you registered to vote was in 2012. That was when you the hit The first 40. time I actually voted as an adult. was in 2012. Yeah. yeah. So that was after you hit 40. So in essence, if you come on the ballot, mm -hmm. only people who are older than 40 should be thinking of voting for you. Why is that? Based on your own... No. Pro great progress. No, in, I am a election. different human being. I yeah, took but a if different... if everybody who is supposed uh, no, to vote for you... I took a different timeline like to get to that... Uh, uh, willingness to apply my political consciousness to voting. Everybody has had different reasons. Some people, even even though they are 18 years or even though they are 40 years today, still vote largely because that is the that is the pattern their their family has always voted. That is what you know their town has always voted. Uh, and I, I don't feel that is independence of thought. Yeah, but you could have voted for independent candidate. You could even have voted for your parliamentary candidate or yeah. independent I, MP. I, and I, think, I think the point I'm trying to make, Maro, is that for you to determine whether to even vote for an independent candidate or to the MPP or for the NDC, um, you need some level of political consciousness. Yeah, and my point I, is that I did not want to vote simply because... I have heard everybody saying this about MPP or everybody saying this about You could scrutinize this. You are a chartered accountant. You could scrutinize it and check whether what they are saying was worth your votes or not. You are not just going to vote. You are not going to follow the wind. You are privileged mm. to have voted. Mm. The fisherman in the Keta Lagoon mm. who has not gone to school voted mm. anyway. Uh, they chose a president they, and a not, parliamentarian you, you don't for know, you. You don't know why they voted, where they voted. There's a principle that says if you do not vote, mm. uh, fools may vote for you and f elect Agreed. fools who will govern you. Agreed. But it is also foolishness to vote simply because you've been given an opportunity to vote without determining uh, why you are making that choice. Because, look, after you vote, it doesn't end at voting. Mm. After you voted... You do have to justify to yourself whether what you are getting is what you bargain for. How do you convince those who, how do you convince people to vote for you when you yourself have not voted for several successive elections? Uh, Omaro, this, this is, look, we're voting now in December. Mm -hmm. I'm a registered voter. I will vote. I voted in 2016. Who did you vote voted. for in 2012? <laughs> I voted for actually the NDC. And in 2016? And I voted for the MPP. So you, you, you tested yes. both? And well, you I wasn't testing. You see, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It wasn't testing. At that point, I felt, you know, my vote was being cast for what I thought uh, was the best choice to be made at that time. 
in that season with what I was hearing and uh, what I could, you know, understand for myself, not being told. Uh, and so these are very critical things. I, I just don't think people should vote simply because they've been given the opportunity to vote. Right. Yes, it's necessary, but I think we should bring a lot more consciousness to the voting process so that this whole thing of uh, we've always voted this tradition, even though it's not going well for all of us, then people just follow and say, well, because it's tradition, we have to continue voting along those lines. Why did you think that the NDC ought to continue in 2012? Well... It, it's not a matter of continuing. Uh, at that point, it was some of the things that were happening. Uh, I felt that, you know, they presented a better case for moving the country forward. Um, at that point, yes, I had quite a bit of understanding of how development economies and all the rest work. I thought they were touting a more infrastructural agenda, uh, which I felt at that time was, was critically needed. And so, yes, I, I voted. How about in 2016? Why did you decide in enough was enough? Let the NDC go home. Well, in 2016, here's the interesting thing that happened. The NDC was still infrastructurally minded. And I felt now was the time to get a lot more, you know, expand the economy. Uh, and this whole thing we do where every government wants to expand the economy by just investing in infrastructure. You know, there are other areas, and I thought that's where they got it wrong for me. Because if you notice, in the last quarter of, of 2016, it was just, you know, every money was just going after infrastructure. And, and so you, you were having an economic bulge in that very latter stage, even though it was election period, you were mm. not going to see any fundamental productivity in that period. And so for me, that was a decision I had to make. So you chose Nana Kufado yes, four I years did. on. Are you disappointed? Very. Why? <laughs> because what we thought was going to happen did not happen. We thought the economy was going to be expansive. It hasn't expanded. Uh, and this is not to do with coronavirus. What indicators were you expecting, or well, you, are you basing on your, your argument? Look, I was having a discussion with somebody the other day, and they were saying, oh, it's coronavirus, that is why the economy hasn't expired. And I said, no, let's not, let's not go down that road. Uh, in 2019, for example, um, we, we raked in, I think, about $53 billion in terms of revenue. Um, 33.01 billion of that was used to pay debt. We have accumulated so much debt that pretty much more than half of what we were raking in as, as income was going to pay debt. The other, you know, 22.22 billion was used to pay, you know, uh, public salaries. So we were having a bulge in the public sector, um, uh, and we were also paying a lot on debt. So if you just look at then this is just a domestic side of things. If you look at that, there was no way the economy was going to expand. There was, there was no way we were going to make any progress. Um, we were still borrowing to buy our own cocoa. Um, and there were so many others. You know, uh, what is it called? We, we talked about planting for food and jobs. And yet, if you look at the contribution of our Greek to our economy today, it slipped down to about 18%. Mm. You know, so there's there so many things that we can talk about. But the NDP uh, argues that it has done better. The NDC... In what way? See, I like this whole thing where people can say we have done better, but it's, it's, it's best if we back those things with the numbers. The numbers are not speaking to we have done better. Hmm. You know, I've, I've just given an example of how... Are you interested how, in hmm. making a judgment on the comparison of the two parties, or you do not want to... I think that's a job Ghanaians have to do. Okay. Okay, you've given up on bo both of them? They've had 27 years to make an impact. Mm. They have not. And we can say so much about this 27 years. I, I was talking to another a colleague who is one of our key people with, with health, on health. And we were looking at the numbers. Average, we spent about what? Uh, between $1.7 and $2 billion every year on health. Mm. For the last 27 years, <laughs> I, I was even saying to him, look, if you look at the figures for, say, 2000, we had an average life expectancy of about 57 years. Uh, uh, Rwanda, and we've been told not to use Rwanda, but Rwanda had an average life expectancy of about 40-something, uh, 47, there was about 10 years gap. Today, Rwanda has an average life expectancy of almost 70. We have an average life expectancy of 64. So what has happened? They've been into a genocide and back. Okay. So there's a lot. There's a lot we're stagging behind on. This is face-to-face uh, -face on City TV. I am Omar Sandamadu. My guest is Marik Gan 
uh, Marie Kofi Gan. He is an independent presidential aspirant for election 2020. He's here to get on the ballot though, because you have to go through a process. But we we'll ask him what are the reasons Ghanaians should be considering in wanting to even put their thumb on an independent candidate. Should Ghanaians just say, well, we're tired of political parties, or he has a better argument to put forth for independent people? Indeed, there's even a coalition that he has broken away from, coalition of independent candidates. Why did he do that? Stay with us. Don't just watch. Be wild. Get fired up. Get down. Catch views. Drop the mic. Choose to be moved. On the move. Hot spot. Any spot. Enjoy a new view. Walk in another's shoes. Power heels. Paws. And feet. Take your stories to the streets. Hold court with court queens. Ice queens. And yas queens. Fly away. Come back home. And enjoy online entertainment on any screen. Sign up at showmax.com and change the way you watch. Guinness <laughs> Minya Guinness, ne origin 19 crates. Auto did you mean 14 crates? Third one, minya television. Fourth one, minya mobile money. Yeah. Uh, fifth one, massage mobile money. And to win you woman a day, I jimmy pa, mamma win jay, win you woman. Seven or so, Ben, wild boom. Almost say, I'm a market and ask an alcohol. Because not even in a market or yes, so on a ball, 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 and it's all about it. So when you're today, what Baba has now, I wash a ball now. When you boom, and son, I can't. You welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. I am Omar Sandama. My guest wants to be president of the land without using a political party, Mari Kofi Gan. Uh, why should Ghanaians throw away political parties and say, look, we are going for an independent person? Is it because of the personality who is going independent, or it's because of how political parties have treated them in the past? Why? It's, it's for a number of reasons. Um, it's not because, you know, I'm an independent candidate alone. It's, it's largely because I'm offering a choice that the political parties have not been able to deliver. Um, it's because the political parties have treated the, the, the business of running a state as though it is, you know, they are running a political party, and that has not augured well. You know, we still run the state as though we are all family, family, and so if somebody messes up, you know, just pull him back and let's do it family-wise and let's let him go nobody gets punished and we've seen it over and over again it's the business of uh, running a state as though you know once we all come into power we're all entitled to everything that you know the state has in terms of assets these are things that it's not augering well for every single Ghanaian. and that's what we intend to change the other reason why they should vote for me is largely because i um uh, I, you see, one of the things I say, two things I say this country needs right now uh, is somebody with integrity and somebody with a track record of accountability. I have both. Um, I am an accountant by training. Um, I have worked in a good number of OECD countries uh, where, you know, I've managed quite a number of funds. Not any single one of those uh, fund owners can come right now and say that a single penny or a single pence has been missing from that. We lack that accountability. We lack that integrity in this country. Um, and for a good number of other reasons, I'm quite young. I understand how the future works. I understand the future we need to create for our youth in this country. Mm. Um, and forgive me to put it this way, but the old folks do not. 
And so it is. It is all of these things. Old folks come. have wisdom. Is that not the wisdom is refrain? not wisdom? And we've always said wisdom is a, is a thing connected to age. It, it, that, that 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 sentiment has changed. Um, you can find a kid today who is very uh, well plugged in more than somebody who is uh, twice or thrice his age. So, uh, you know, the, the, the demography is changing. What do you think about the constitutional mandate or requirement that says you should be 40 at least before you run for president? Do you think that's fair or it's too I, much? I think at the time it was said, yes, it would have been reasonable. Um, I think that demography is changing, the rate of absorption of knowledge is changing, and so some of these things actually do need to change. You think the age should be lower? I think it will start to change. To what? If um, I would say something from 37 is reasonable. because no, just three years. It, it, is, it, it makes a lot of difference. We have presidents it elsewhere. Makes, it Justin makes a Trudeau lot of is difference. Uh, yes. In France, we have uh, Marie, uh, well, Macron, Macron, who's he's, just he's, turned 40. Yeah, so... Why don't you consider these things, perhaps? And well, I mean, if you look at the world, you see, the point I think we need to understand is that the world is moving in a totally different direction. Mm -hmm. It takes a certain kind of mindset to also move either ahead or in that direction. Mm -hmm. You will not find, you know, you, you will find that mindset in a lot of younger people. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's necessary that we start to groom our young people and position them to be ready for the future because the truth is the future is going to come no matter how you look at it. So you're campaigning on your personal track record. But you see, these political it's, it's, parties... It's not just my personal track record. I mean, you're, 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 you're positioning yourself as being better. You have no stint of corruption. At least we haven't seen one yet. Yeah. Maybe when we dig, we may find. I don't There's know. There's nothing we to find. We may look for it. No, we, we don't know. Yeah, we can't <laughs> say. But I'm saying that these political parties, mm. too, are led by individuals who claim that they have a good track record. So at the end of the day, we are not voting for an independent person, but of course, it's the person who leads the party. That's why we have an individual on the ballot and we have an executive president. How do you argue? that an independent candidate is better than an independent-minded person running a political party? Omar, it's very obvious. We've had the two you've talked about for 27 years. And we have grown, haven't we? We have a constitution. We have a fledging democracy. We have, we have a, a constitution that has not grown at the rate at which the people have evolved. We have a constitution that has not evolved at the rate at which businesses it is trying to uh, uh, organized have evolved. We have a constitution that has not grown at the rate at which the world in which we're living uh, has evolved. So mm. the constitution you just talked about actually needs an overhaul in itself. Mm. Um, the leaders you talked about need a change in, in mindset as we speak. Uh, and so this is not me pitching myself against them. This is me saying, you know what, we've gotten to a point where Ghanaians need to see that the choices we've made in the past, yes, they may have been good, you know, 10 or 20 years back, but mm -hmm. after 27 years, we've just come to the realization that those choices we made between either the NDC or the MPP are no more fit for purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and it works with everything. You know, the machines you use here, maybe 10 years down the line, they may not be fit for So purpose. why don't you try, try a third party? Why do we have to bring an individual who has no political well, it's not, again, it's not about individuals. You know, uh, like I said, we, we can try another third party. Uh, that's not a problem if that's what Ghanaians want. But the reality we have to face is that the way parties have been organized in this country is a family affair. It's a very close-knit agenda. It's uh, you scratch your bank, I scratch mine. As long as we are in this party together, uh, then nothing you do can be wrong. I cannot punish you because that puts an indictment on the party and that gives ammunition to our, our opponents and therefore it will never happen. So we, we've lacked in discipline at some point. We have no discipline in our governance procedures. Um, we have no opportunity to actually punish people because doing so speaks bad against the party. And there's so many things that have come out of the way we have run parties. Let's look at the practicality of being an independent president. A lot of the structures are built for people by the political parties that they represent. So you have ward chairman who end up coordinating activities in those municipalities. Mm. You have municipal chief executive DCs coming from party candidates who may have contested and lost or who mm. have uh, been active or party chairman and so on. How are you going to choose, for instance, an assembly, a, a, a municipal chief executive or a district chief executive for my district, Shai of Sudoku, when you do not have anybody in your party represented in that locality? 
Um, Omar, there, there is already a structure for choosing DC. It's not entirely party driven. You're supposed to be nominating the president. Right. You're supposed to it, nominate. How yeah, would you nominate there, someone there, in Charles Odoko, for instance? There, there are people who make part of that choosing process. It's not just the president. Yeah. Um, uh, there are assembly people th that are also part of that selection process or that They're that supposed process. to just vote. They are, yes. They are not supposed to But let, them let me just put this across to you, Umaro. Positions are not to be party-driven. If we go down or continue to go down that line, that is why we are in the problem we are in. You know why? What we want, hold on. What we want to do is to say, you know what? Let's go out there and find the best suited Ghanaians for this sort of role. And this is not just at the very basic level. Mm. This is all across. You know, whether it's uh, ministerial, deputy ministerial. I know. Uh, uh, but, yeah, but president considers all these things. Who is best suited? And they choose the best among their mm. party in the locality. But that's where the problem you, starts. Yeah, but it's no, not just about the party. Are you suggesting that they do not have better people no i am suggesting that yeah. if all we want to say is to say you know if the mpp wins power mm -hmm. then every good person in this country who should fill a position should come from the mpp it has to be then, tried and tested no, but then we have messed up with the meritocracy that we need to move this country forward have if we the mpp yes. has at least four million followers no, the, the no, ndc has at least four MPs, million followers MPP, are you saying that out of four million people we can't get someone in each of the district that's, that should be very open you don't have that population following no. you the fact that th this is about ghana we're talking about fine the fact that explain somebody, to me how you're good. going to choose your dces when the you do not know somebody, anybody there and you don't no, know anybody is, who knows is, anybody there well what do you mean i don't know anybody you don't know who i know maro how many people can you really know since what, you're an individual you but that that is the point i am not working alone and this is the mistake everybody makes there, there's a, this assumption that uh, because you are an independent candidate, it means you are alone. No, that's not what you it means. You have people? I, of course. What you, kind you, of people do you on, have? Hold on. You sing a manifesto. Mm -hmm. Okay. Umaro, if I were to ask you, how many people do you think wrote that manifesto? Mm -hmm. It will be a, a, a team, I'm sure. Good. But how many people Every do you have on the ground? Every single thing on that manifesto was, was put together by at least a minimum of 12 uh, or so professionals, between mm -hmm. 12 and 20 professionals, who came together to put that together. Now, if that is anything to go by, Umaro, it tells you that we actually have very solid people to get things done. That's awesome. But we, you see, I've looked at your manifesto. Mm -hmm. You are interested in decentralization. And that's yeah. why I keep happening on the right. MCE thing. Yeah. How are you going to choose DCEs? So, for Umaro. instance, Zab, I have asked Charles Rodoko if you ignored that. Right. Zab no, 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 you. Or Mion, who is going to be Umaro. on DC, for if instance? If you, you are in my there? team, mm -hmm. um, maybe I could say, oh, I actually know people in Keta, mm -hmm. but I don't know people in Zabzugu. Okay. Okay. If you are in my team, Umaro, I am very sure that you would also know others who can present a viable candidate. Do you know? So it does not have to be about me. It does not have to be about the limitation that I am running alone as an independent but you see, candidate. That is why you have a network of people. The problem is that the DCE is the president's representative in I a agree. locality. You should at least have someone who you trust who knows that person if you don't know them directly you're supposed to choose 240 Umaro, plus people let's get real to help this you govern one. at the local level mm -hmm. the the president of this country just as you asked me whether i know every single person that is going to be chosen to represent the president at those levels the president whether it was mahama or whether it's nana does not know every single person that he has to appoint in some cases some of them have had to be recommended to yes him. and so the but same, recommended by people he has known and trusted but, but so the, the point i'm also making to you maro mm -hmm. is that the fact that i'm independent does not mean i don't have people Fine. i trust how many do you have people in every constituency nation I have people in every constituency. There are a lot more people who are joining us on a day-to-day basis. Uh, let me, before you jump in, um, some who are professional and they've been working all their lives in this country, outside this country, and, and all over the place. Uh, there are some who are local, who know the terrain, and who understand the things that need to get Do done. Do you in have those a terrains. coordinator or a focal person in every constituency? Right down from the regional level all the way down. How many do you have per constituency? 
we have what do you mean uh, followers or no, no, people who are people. building your project in for terms you. of our constituency let me start from the regional mm. at the regional level we have about three people heading every region okay who try to borrow it down to the constituency. at the constituencies we have at least a minimum of five people in each of the constituencies and these are not supporters and followers but rather coordinators well, you, you can't be working with us if you don't support no i mean i mean people who are working the <laughs> machinery you know, these are for people you who are working working the machinery. and this is not about do you know all the people who, are, who represent you in the in it's all the three people represent in each of these 16 I know regions. most of them, yes. Most of them. So, for instance, if I ask you who your regional coordinators for Northeast are, you can mention the three. Um, his name is Tahiru. The, the lead there is that Mr. Tahiru That's Ibrahim. Northeast. Yes. And Upper West? Upper West is, uh, uh, Upper West is Aaron uh, Dabo. How well have you known Aaron Dabo? I've known Aaron for a good number of years, mm -hmm. close to about 10 years. Okay, so he identifies with your group. Of course. Was he a politica political party member before he chose of to follow another party? Mm -hmm. um, no, Aaron has always been uh, the typical standard. His brother, though, is a very strong MPP person. I see. Yes. Then when Aaron is in charge of the Upper West region, so you trust anything Aaron tells you. Do you know anybody in the Upper West aside There are Aaron? other people within the Upper West region team. Uh, for example, Mr. Solomon, who is uh, working with Aaron. Uh, uh, Mr. Gideon, who works with Solomon. So these are Aaron. the regional level? These are the regional level. How about level. the constituency? Do you know anybody there? Of course. Which of the constituencies, for instance, you know? Okay. Um, okay, let me let me take the Anglo, for example. Oh, the Anglo is down south, your, yeah, okay. your, near your hometown. I want us to talk about a remote Okay, that's fine. Do you like... want, okay, let's take, let's take uh, what is it called? Upper East, for example. Mm -hmm. um, the gentleman who is at the very constituency level, um, Mr. Paul Honkani. Which, um, which constituency is this? Um, I think this is uh, Borga Central. So Borga Central is a heart of the capital of, yes. the, of the of the region. Yes. Let's go a bit more rural. <laughs> Let's go to Timpani, for I, instance. I don't, I don't know what this is going to drive. So by. this is supposed to check whether you really have people but on the ground, see, who, people who the, you know who can the, help the you. Point because I see, am also party, making. You see, political parties always go say that we have grassroots supporters and we are mobilizing. Right. And they have people who can, in fact, the president in Accra mm. or John Mahama, for mm -hmm. instance, in Cantonment, mm. may possibly have a constituency youth organizer mm -hmm. in Borga. Bamboy and he mm. can just easily call him or in yeah, but what and makes call you think I can call somebody at the constituency level and find out I'm how just things checking are if going. you have these people. I just but, want but to know. You see, the point is that I've I've been telling you that we have three, five, and then you know the and then bottom spreads. spreads right. Okay, but you still don't believe that I can pick a phone and call somebody. I, I do not doubt you. I do not doubt you. I haven't seen your phone book. Okay. Do you have? Are you going to choose your DCEs from? from political parties, MPP and NDC, or you're going to choose independent people in the municipalities? I will choose people who are fit for the job, Omaro. Okay. How and that's where you vet them? Stand. Yes. You have a team that will vet of them. Of course. How about regional ministers? The same. You go no, one of the things we have said we want to do with regional ministers that is that they should be people who have an understanding of development. Okay. This thing where we choose regional uh, people, uh, sorry, uh, regional uh, uh, ministers simply because they have either made the most noise during campaign or they have given some money, it needs to change because what we, and I'm glad you understand that we are very focused on uh, some level of decentralization. decentralization is your interest. Right, it mm. is my interest. And so we do need the right caliber of people who understand that you know development is not just about being a regional minister and therefore uh, you become King Kong and therefore you know uh, it's all about what money has come to the region and how you you control that money we want to start having people who will go at the regional level and start t t telling us these are the things we've seen in our region and these are the ways we can start raising financing at the regional level yep. because currently as we speak tomorrow the we've talked about decentralization several times what we currently have is largely just political and administrative decentralization mm, because they're supposed to represent the president do you believe mcs dc should be voted for or appointed by the president I think the president has enough powers to want to add. And, th and this is something that I feel that uh, uh, when the debate came about whether they should have political uh, uh, sort of connotations around the, uh, the, uh, the uh, coming on board, I felt very strongly against it because the, the political parties already have enough uh, uh, power as it is, uh, have already enough influence to, 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 to and they are not using it So you don't it think well. DC should be appointed? you think they should be elected? 
I think everybody should be elected. So the DC voice is, of the people assemblies should be are already there. elected. So yes. DC should be elected. Yes. MPs have been elected. I stood for this. Should regional being ministers be elected? elected? I just didn't agree that it should be uh, on partisan, yes, on partisan, partisan basis. Parliaments. Mm. You're supposed to work choose in parliament and do a lot one. of. Yeah, you're yes. supposed to choose some of your ministers. From yes, that. you're going to do that, right? It's it's the law. So if you think that MPP and NDC have failed us, mm. you're going to rely on MPP and NDC's MPs to help you develop a country. You but, think they'll work with you? Hold on. But MPP and NDC is not individuals. They are, yeah, that's the point. They're yeah. not individuals. Yeah, they're not individuals. They are good. So, yeah, they have a similar mindset. Yeah, so it does not mean that everybody in parliament who is on MPP side is, is awful. Oh, really? Yet you said Isn't that, that the case? And yet you said the parties are not helping well, us. Well, if the, the party that has... Unfair, hold, on, hold on, no. The, par the, no, the, the, the party has... If I said CTFM was not great, does mm -hmm. that make you not great? So no. you're, then it's not fair to say no, that CTFM is but, not great. No, we, uh, no I think because we you need know to, that CTFM no. is made up of elements, and good, if the elements are but great, it does not mean that a, a you know, group is as good as the elements. There, there are there. different reasons why a party may not be great. It may be because of their policy direction. And the way we do politics in this country, mind you, Umaro, is that irrespective of what your personal position is as an MP, as soon as the party says this is the direction we're going to, you have to follow. Otherwise, you probably lose the chance of your next primary. What I am offering to even MPs within parliament is to say for the first time in your, in your career as an MP, you actually do not have to be afraid to stand against a policy that has been brought to parliament. You shouldn't even be afraid of having a hard conversation around it because you know that your next primary is not on the line. So we are still testing the practicality of an independent president. We've no, not had it before. Not, it's we, not I'm testing. That's what we are doing now. We have not had one before. It's not testing. So we, I'll we, tell you why it's not testing. Why, why are we not testing? Because you see, when we started this process of our democracy, mm. one of the things we understood was that the, 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 the executive was going to be totally different from the, uh, uh, the legislature, the, the legislature mm -hmm. and of course, you the know, judiciary. we know the judiciary is already mm -hmm. quite, quite independent. What we have had is not that. We, we don't have a legislature that has the hard arguments with, with executives. They largely rubber stamp. I am saying that getting an independent candidate in there is going to ensure that for the first time we do somewhat have some level of separation. Okay. So, so, so you're going to choose from these people, except that you and, are going to I choose those. And I actually have an advantage in How? choosing. Because if you have... None of them owe you no. nothing. Well, that's one. Mm -hmm. But the second point is that if you have an NDC executive, 99% of the chance he's going to elect people, choose people from mm -hmm. just the NDC. Yeah. We know the NDC doesn't have all the men. Yeah. If you do like what's with an MPP, the same is going to happen. Mm -hmm. with, an, uh, with an independent candidate, you actually have the chance to choose the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. But you see, the difficulty, again, that you may run into is that as a president, you want an executive that will help you develop your agenda. So, for instance, Nana Kufado said he wanted to do free SHS. Mm. If he needed parliament to support him and he, has, he doesn't have majority in parliament, like you may not have, it would be difficult to get no, things through it's parliament. Okay. Umaro, I, I had an MP say to me uh, that if you bring your budget to parliament, we won't pass it. And the simple question I asked him, how do you get paid? You know. The, 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 the agenda we bring to the Ghanaian people is not about parliamentarians. Mm. They are representing Ghanaians. Mm. The agenda we bring is for the people of this country. Mm -hmm. The duty of the parliamentarian is to ensure that those agendas are the right for the people they represent mm -hmm. and that they are executed in the proper and safest manner for the benefit of us all. If you have an MP now telling you that Yes, your agenda is great. It's going to help the people of my constituency. The only reason why I'm not going to stamp my, my mark on it is simply because you are not MPP or you are not NDC. That MP has just exposed himself to the constituency he comes from. Okay. So that, that you, you think you figured out how you're going to deal with parliament. Your, well, vi your vice president or running mate, how are you going to get one? What do you mean, how am I going to get one? What's the procedure the, the, you're going to adopt? The same manner everybody gets a vice president, we have a set of uh, criteria we're looking for. You have one already? We will be announcing one very shortly. What's the, what should we expect from your running mate? Um, you should expect that there would be people largely with integrity, people who understand how the world works. Um, 
uh, people who understand that this country needs to really, really have a big shift in terms of uh, the way we do business, even with ourselves and the rest of the well, world. Ethnicity and uh, regional yes, balance, balance will be a part. Yes. Religion? Yeah. Um, no. Religion, no matter. No. So you, you're a Christian? I mean, uh, I'm, a, I'm a very staunch Christian, yes. You're going to choose a Christian as a running mate? I, I will not disclose that now. You will see our running mate. You choose soon. a northerner? I would happily choose a northerner. But would means you may or may not, w would you? Tomorrow, this is going to come out pretty soon. I think just as Ghanaians have been... you woman? I, I think you're pushing this. And, and what I'm I have asking. to... You, you're asking. What I'm also saying to you is that just as Ghanaians had patience to uh, see the, the inauguration of our manifesto mm. uh, and were excited about it, I guarantee Ghanaians will be excited about my VIP. I have seen somewhere that you were part of a coalition of independent poli um, presidential aspirants. Political aspirants. Yes, and then mm. you were supposed to have some gentleman's agreement for one mm. person to be the candidate and another to be running mate. Mm -hmm. And you boycotted after you lost I did the... not boycott. That's what the happened? wrong term to use. Okay, what did... What um, there was um, a stab in the, uh, the value of integrity. And so I, I walked off because the truth is that I promised Ghanaians that every step of the way we're doing this right from this campaign all the way to uh, 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 running for office and getting into office was going to be based on integrity. What was the idea? The idea was to have one of you independent candidates. So there were a number of independent candidates. Yeah, up to what, five? Um, six, actually. Six. If you, uh, actually, seven, if you add Joy and uh, okay. the others. So one was supposed, you're supposed to gen agree, agree and choose one of you as a we, leader? We had a number of uh, criteria. We set about five criteria. You know, uh, the debate was one of those criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, having uh, feet on the ground was one of those criteria. Having social media presence. Um, having a manifesto, or at least a, a, a solid plan to move this okay. country forward, and then uh, having some infrastructure to be able to raise uh, support, uh, funding-wise, was one of those. Um, at a point that was set aside um, because of time, they felt, you know, we wouldn't have time to go through all that process. So there was an agreement to say, you know what, let's go on this debate. Let's choose who can appeal to the people the most. Uh, mm -hmm. We all agreed on that. We went in. Uh, Joy put out four polls. Um, eventually, the steering committee decided they were only going to use one poll out of the, out of the four. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gun for Gun agenda won on three out of the four polls. The very one they chose to uh, use was the only one on which my, 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 my colleague uh, won on. And we just thought that process was not fair. And the reason why we thought it was not fair was that Ghanaian stayed up late uh, to watch that debate. Ghanaian stayed up late uh, two days in a row to vote um, for who they, they felt their choice was. And so to have won on three out of the four and we get told that, you know, we're going to put aside everything Ghanaian stood up to vote for, it's unacceptable. What do you say to people who say, look, you just wanted to be on the ballot, and because you didn't get that opportunity, you decided to walk? I'm still going to be on the ballot. Yeah, but you would have been a vice running mate, and you are not no, going to be I'm on the ballot. I'm still going to be on the ballot. Oh, tomorrow, look, the, the reality is that we have started this campaign longer than any So any you're not a sour loser? I'm not a sour loser. As a matter of fact, this is proof of my level of integrity. Let's test your level of knowledge of Ghana. How well do you know Ghana? I know Ghana reasonably okay. Where knowing Ghana means knowing Ghanaians, but how about knowing the geography of Ghana? How well do you know Ghana? It, it depends on how you want to look at it. I mean, I don't know every crony and crevice of this country. Um, I have moved around a bit. Have you taught the whole country? Um, I have taught a substantive part of this country. In fact, the as a matter part, of fact, the northern part? Which uh, part? Pretty much. Uh, have you visited all 16 regions? Yes, I have. All of them, yes. the original capitals. Yes. Have you gone to some districts in some of the? I have been to some districts. Yeah. You have gone to. Actually, uh, to be honest, I was actually we had started our tour in the north uh, in the first week of March. Mm -hmm. No, in the second week of March. Uh, so we were actually in Tamale. No, we were actually in Tamale. This was the second week in March, very early uh, stage of the second week. And then uh, two weeks later, we were told that you know. Uh, uh, COVID and they were getting ready. We, we had intel they were getting ready to shut down. So we actually had to uh, curtail everything and come back. And come back. Uh, so that has affected, you know, our movement. So just spent two weeks. 
You I just but no, but before too. that, no, mm. before that, I had taught pretty much quite a lot last um, year. Uh, last year, 2019, especially, yeah. We had visited quite a number of universities and the various districts that we, we could get to. Let's talk about the region you come from. How well do you know the Eastern Corridor? And what do you think is the problem with the Eastern Corridor? What, as in the infrastructure? The road, yes, the Eastern Corridor road. I, I think that is an issue of commitment. Uh, that's the way I see it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know what the NDC's issues are. I don't what know what opportunities do you think would be accrued from developing the Eastern Corridor Road? It will open up the economy. Um, it will open up the economy largely. Um, and one of the things I've often said is that, um, and it, you would see it in, my manifest, in our manifesto, is that we need to find a very uh, strategic way of connecting all the regions together. Mm. Uh, if using one single track infrastructure. By road the, or train? By road and by train. By train, largely, by, by train, when we say by train, what we want to do is to connect the north to the south. How do you plan to do that? We have a plan for the central corridor, the eastern corridor, yeah. and the western corridor yeah. for the rail sector. Is that the yeah. same structure you're going to it use? It is the have same plan? structure, but we, we want to improve that a bit and connect the dots. Give That's me a physical it. plan. Um, so you, you would have seen it in our manifesto. And say if it with you, me, because uh, you're here Unfortunately, I don't have, okay. Let me, let me, I, I, I'm, I'm quite... No, technique, you can say so. it without... Uh, Without. Yes, uh, so okay. if you have a plan on paper that you have properly um, I actually on. have a plan here that I can share with you um, that is actually uh, uh, obvious enough for you to see. Um, and basically, okay, I can access that. So basically what we're doing is there's two, two ways we want to look at it. One is to have a straight route, uh, road and train network from here all the way down south. Uh, sorry, that, up north. Okay. Um, and that using is which towns using, and cities? Using what? Using what towns and cities? Going oh, it's, it's one straight route all the way. It goes through uh, from. So at the very bottom, it splits into three. We are one comes straight to Accra. Mm -hmm. One goes via off to Tema. The other goes straight to Takradi. And that is intentionally done to ensure that uh, so, so, commercial. Sorry, 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 say that again. One via off to where? Yeah, at the very bottom. Mm -hmm. It's a straight route from north to south, okay. but when it gets to the eastern region, one veers directly off to Tema. Which part of the eastern region? Uh, this is something that my engineers will have to. I'm okay. just, I'm just giving That's you a, a, a whole. So the eastern picture. region is split into three. It's split into three. One, one comes goes... straight to Accra. Mm -hmm. uh, one heads straight into Tema Habo. The other goes straight to Takradi Habo. Do, do and you, intentionally, do you, the, do you have the geographical sense of this area so that I could debate you a bit further, or you want your engineers to do that? Because I, I think this I'm is something at, that I can, I can picture it. Because we already have the route coming to Accra. Mm -hmm. We have different routes into but it's Accra not, from the The north. reason why we're talking about the split, Omaro, mm -hmm. uh, and this is where for me it is exciting that needs to explore, mm -hmm. is that we want to connect the commercial hubs largely through exports. Mm -hmm. What we currently have is everything has to come through Accra. Um, or the Tema motorway. Do you know you can go to the north without coming through Accra from Tema? I, yes, I know. I know so, that. so I don't get your your. Yeah, but the, the point the point we are the reason why we're doing it that way, Umaro, is that the way we have envisaged it is that if you take the train lines, for example, that are coming from the north to south. Mm -hmm. The idea behind this is during the day, and this are is... Are we talking about train now or road? The, the split we're, we're talking about both. Okay. And so if you look at our manifesto, one of the things we've described is what we call the Freedom Project. Mm -hmm. That is a combination of both road uh, and train. And I think you should so take a quick side. look side by side. And I think okay. you should take a look so at it. So the north starts from where? The north starts from Paga okay. all the way down. So Paga, so then right Bolga, straight down. and continues yes. with Tamale, then yes. Kumasi. Um, Yes, and it, then it comes and to... And then, so it, it, it traverses the border between, uh, right through, you know where the savannah joins the uh, uh, the north? Yes, it's called right. Fufuso Junction. Fufu, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I'm not sure about the name, but it traverses that boundary. All the, so it's a really straight route down. Mm. Um, and we're not saying for some of this we are building totally new roads. They're, they're, already, they're, existing already, yeah, they're already existing road yes. facilities. We want to expand them and make sure they connect to that one single track. And then you split it at the bottom. Yes. And one has to Takradi. One has to Accra, you know, one has to Takradi. And the reason why we're... Do you know from Takradi, you don't necessarily come to, need to come to Accra to head up north? Yeah, but that is not what we are creating. The reason why we're doing no, that, that, there's Umar, already an existing structure. I, like I know that. there's an existing structure, which is why earlier I said to you that part of the process is ensuring that we are enjoining these existing structures into one main structure. How about the western and the eastern corridors? What, what's your plan with them? 
Um, the Western and the Eastern Corridor, we, so there's an alternative angle we're looking at that from. Um, and this is what we're calling the Yasantua Secular, uh, okay. which is largely to use all the little, little roads that join all the various regions into one big spell that is an oval. Pretty okay. much. That connects every single region. Um, and the reason why we're doing this, Umaro, is that we need to open up this economy. Okay. Um, and we want to open it using three categories in mind. Agriculture, so mm -hmm. it opens up for agriculture, so it opens up for logistics, mm -hmm. and so it opens up for tourism. This is Face to Face on uh, CTTV. My name is Umaro Sandab, and my guest is Marie Kofi Gan. He wants to be president on an independent ticket. He has outlined three uh, plans he has, agriculture, logistics, and so on. We ask him what his policy on agriculture is and what his policy on education is and what is going to be the key item on his manifesto going to these elections. Don't just watch. Be wowed. Get fired up. Get down. Catch views. Drop the mic. Choose to be moved. On the move. Hot spot. Any spot. Enjoy a new view. Walk in another shoes. Power heels. Paws. And feet. Take your stories to the streets. Hold court with court queens. Ice queens. And yas queens. Fly away. Come back home. And enjoy online entertainment on any screen. Sign up at showmax.com and change the way you watch. Welcome back to Face to Face. This is City TV. Marik Kofi Gan is my guest. The NDC in 2016 presented a manifesto. They are yet to give us a manifesto for 2020. That 2016 one was defeated. MPP has presented a manifesto. You talked about transforming Ghana for all. What is your manifesto going to do? Our manifesto. So you have it with you. Maybe you can yeah. read the cover. For our me. our manifesto largely is about investing in citizens and building a Ghana that works for every one of us, not just a few. How? Um, by ensuring that for the first time we are not investing uh, resources into people's pockets, and that they're actually being invested in Ghanaians, especially the young people. Um, by ensuring that we bridge the gap, the equity gap that is hanging, whether it's economic or, or infrastructure. Has that not been solved by Nana Kufado through In free SHS? Way? Advanced, I mean, no, first of all, uh, Umaro, it is not free. It's not free? No, it's not free. Mm -hmm. It is paid for you and I's tax money. Okay. So it's not free. Secondly, I have always said it's not just about the numbers, the quality of education must improve in this country. Um, the whole route learning or true and poor and theory learning, we need to do away with that. We need to introduce the, the likes of competency skills. We need to introduce uh, some level of practicality in our learning processes. Uh, we need to start making sure mathematics become a thing that kids love to learn. Mm. Um, uh, the last time I checked, uh, a year or so, two years ago, we had less than 25% of our children who are six years or old who were actually able to read. That needs to change. Um, at educational level, at the tertiary stage, it needs to be. We need to start seeing a reflection of industry in in our in our in our tertiary education. So one of the things we have said we would do is to ensure that we actually bring. Uh, what we call it, industry players into the curriculum setting process. So that from the start go, we know that people, young people are learning what they will meet in industry or what they can do for industry. Is that what the technical universities are doing currently? The technical universities have become academic institutions. Are you sure? You know that. I mean, when they started off, they were polytechnics, they were purely technical. Mm -hmm. Today, you know, Accra, 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 Accra Poly, mm. well, now Accra University is, is doing a lot of other academic courses. We need to refocus those uh, universities. Is that something you would change? We have said we will refocus them. You said you are going to not go through the normal process to choose an IGP. Explain that to me quickly. Uh, basically, what we're saying is that, yes, the president has the power or the constitution grants him the power to select or choose who he wants to have as an IGP. What we are saying is that we should have a lot more voices in that process to give it some level of meritocracy. So, for example, we are saying we want to pull together a good number of uh, institutions, uh, respectable institutions who represent the voice of Ghanaians, uh, put them together and say, look, we want you to look within this country, uh, within Africa, within the world, look for a Ghanaian who is competent, uh, who is uh, able to deliver, and who has shown signs of being able to give results. Even if he's not a police officer? Well, he has to be a police officer. Yeah, but why do you have to go and choose within the world? For well, a police officer well, who's a good self-Ghanaian police No, Umaro, 
I have met with police officers in Sudan and South Sudan. Yeah, but there's a hierarchy for the police yes, service. We but know that, the point I'm making is that if you say they can't be a police officer simply because they're outside, that is wrong. Because I have met senior police officers who are serving on UN uh, missions outside this country. You that's think they're not known to still, the service? That still because there's a council. Yes, I know there's a council. Mm. But that still makes them police officers. I'm just trying to correct so that they point. Should, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doubting that. I'm saying okay. that any police officer you see operating or be working outside Ghana no, was sent by the No, but the point I'm trying to say is that these are here. police officers who either have served in this country before at some point. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't just land in, in a UN... Uh, so is it a UNICEF. vote kind of thing you want? It's not a vote. I'm saying these are people we want to bring together and say, look, look through the people who qualify and who are capable of delivering results without any, you know, political affiliations, you know, connections or whatever, and tell us what three people you feel are the best suited for the role. Marik Kofi Gunn, Independent Presidential Aspirant, thank you for coming on Face to Face. Thank you for having me, Omar. And that'll be it for our show today. Do join us next week for another exciting episode of Face to Face. My name is Omar Sanda Amado. This is your reference point for election 2020. It's your election center, City TV and City FM.